Oh, Isaac Toops was just juggling eggs. Uh, so, what up, Isaac Toops? Yeah. <laughs> Today, we're talking about mashed potatoes. It's such a simple dish, but there's actually countless variables when it comes to what type of potato, how you're cutting it, how you're cooking it, and what fat you're using to make it creamy in the end. Today we're gonna show five different varieties. We're gonna taste the difference between Yukon Gold and Idaho. We're gonna show a couple different ways to mash the potatoes, and I'm gonna show three ways to boost the flavor of your typical mashed potatoes. The first thing to think about is what type of potato you want to work with. Generally, people think of potatoes as either being starchy or waxy. Here we have Idaho potatoes and Yukon gold potatoes. Idaho potatoes are sort of the typical potato that most people think about when they think about a generic potato. Those are starchy potatoes. When you cook them, they're going to have a fluffy, almost powdery texture. Idaho potatoes are great for gnocchi, they're great for mashed potatoes, they're sort of like an uh, all-purpose potato in that sense. Waxy potatoes like Yukon Golds have a denser texture, almost a sweet and earthy kind of a flavor, whereas the Idaho's are kind of more neutral. And generally with Yukon Gold potatoes, you think of using them chopped up and roasted in the oven. They're less utilized for things like mashed potatoes or turning them into gnocchi but it doesn't mean you can't use them. We're gonna make one batch with Yukon Gold and one batch with Idaho potatoes and see what the differences are, which one we like better. Once you start to peel your potatoes and cut your potatoes, they're exposed to the air. They can turn brown pretty quickly. You wanna have room temperature water nearby. After you peel your potatoes and cut them, immediately submerge them in the room temperature water, that way they don't turn brown. You don't want to drop your potatoes into boiling water. The outside of the potato will cook too quickly and the inside will stay raw. It's common to actually cut up your potatoes, drop them into room temperature water, and then bring that water up to a boil and that way the entire potato cooks evenly throughout. You don't want to boil these too aggressively, obviously, because they're delicate. You don't want them to break apart prematurely. A gentle simmer is what you're looking for. Also, you don't need to fill your pot full of water as if you were boiling pasta. With potatoes, you need maybe half as much water. You just need enough water so that the potatoes are barely submerged. That way the water comes up to a simmer quicker and the whole cooking process will be a little bit faster. You're gonna wanna salt your water pretty much right after you add the potatoes. You don't need to be too aggressive here. A little bit of that salt is gonna penetrate into the potato to give you a fuller flavor when you're making mashed potatoes. My colleague Ella has been actually working on mashed potatoes for the past couple weeks, doing a very diligent test of basically different methods of making mashed potatoes. The reason that we're showing cooking them in simmering water rather than in the oven or any other method is because based on her testing, we found that boiling them on the stove top is just the simplest and also most consistent way to cook potatoes. I cut these potatoes into maybe two inch kind of rustic pieces. That way they'll cook faster than if you leave them whole. You wanna to start to check your potatoes after about 20, 25 minutes. You could take a fork or a paring knife, just poke them. They should be very delicate and fall apart completely easily. If you're using the potato masher, it doesn't matter quite as much. But if you're passing your potatoes through a tammy or a ricer or a food mill and you're looking for really smooth mashed potatoes, it's important to fully cook the potatoes until they're completely tender. It's the only way to get very smooth, smooth, creamy mashed potatoes. So here's our tender potatoes. They're strained. One thing to keep in mind when making mashed potatoes, it's really important to work with steaming hot potatoes. Once you let the potatoes cool, if you try and mash them, their texture can change and become more gummy. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt first. This is a pot with melted butter. I've added some cream to it as well. So I'm gonna be adding a combination of melted butter and cream to the potatoes all at the same time. For people at home, a general ratio for every four or five pounds of potatoes you have, half a stick to a stick of butter one to two cups of heavy cream, depending on what texture you're going for. Start with less, you can always add more liquid. Some people have very strong opinions about, are you adding cold butter, are you adding melted butter? 
Are you adding cream and then butter or butter and then cream? If you have strong feelings about this, I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments. For today's sake, butter and cream warm at the same time. So for this, we're really going for a rustic, sort of grandma style, skin on, nothing fancy mashed potatoes. Once they're initially mashed using the masher, I'm gonna transfer over to the rubber spatula just to help incorporate that cream and butter. Depending on how chunky you like it or how smooth you like it, you could use the masher more at this point to get it a touch smoother. I like the way this is looking right now with the skin on and little pieces of potato in there. It's looking nice. You can always make mashed potatoes ahead of time, put it in the fridge, reheat it, when you're reheating mashed potatoes, I like to start with like a quarter cup of water and get it simmering and then add your potatoes and the steam from the simmering evaporating water is gonna reheat your mashed potatoes. These are our Idaho potatoes, nice and hot. I know I said this before, but I'll say it again. It's really important to work with your potatoes while they're steaming hot, especially the Idaho's. Once they cool down, if you try and mash them and they're cool, they're gonna have a really gummy, unpleasant texture. This is one of my favorite kitchen tools. It's called a Tammy. You can use it as a flour sifter. You can use it as a strainer. This is my go-to for making mashed potatoes. I'll have a plastic bench scraper like this and I'll press the potatoes through the Tammy and it makes this fluffy, snow-like texture. And then all it takes is a little bit of butter and cream to make the perfect, fluffy, smooth mashed potatoes. If you use a high-powered tool, especially the food processor, again, you're gonna end up with something really gummy and unpleasant. The only way to make fluffy mashed potatoes is really to mash it by hand, either using a tammy, a potato masher, a ricer, a food mill, something of that nature, even a fork. This might seem tedious, but really it only takes a minute or two. Here's our fluffy potatoes. We passed it through the tammy. I'm gonna use a whisk to mix in the butter and cream here. The texture I'm going for is very smooth and creamy. I'm gonna actually continue adding liquid until I can pass the whisk through the potatoes and the potatoes don't get stuck like a puree texture, basically. One advantage of the starchier Idaho potato is that it really can absorb as much liquid as you wanna give it. If you wanna go for something very rich and creamy, almost in the style of the Famous chef Joel Rubichon has his mashed potatoes that are, people joke it's like almost equal parts butter and potato. If you wanna go for something like that, so rich and smooth, the Idaho potato is gonna be your better bet rather than the Yukon Gold. This is the texture I'm looking for, where it passes through the whisk. Hey Emma. Hi, how's it going? Going great. Good. Uh, we did a little head-to-head -head Yukon Gold mashed potatoes mm -hmm. versus Idaho potatoes. Okay. There's a few different variables floating around in here, so it's not very scientific. It's just sort of like going with your first instinct about okay. what you taste. I love it. The Yukon Golds, we used a potato masher and left the skin on. Okay. The Idaho potatoes, we passed it through a tammy and took the skin off. Cool. So we're going okay. sort of like rustic versus smooth, and then also Yukon Gold versus Idaho. Do you have strong preferences when it comes to mashed potatoes? Um, I'm not a mashed potato fan. Yeah. If I had a potato, I probably would not mash it. Oh. I would probably like roast it or turn it into a hash brown. But right. I think if I am mashing a potato, this is probably my guy. Yeah. I like things like a little chunky and this way it's got a little more texture. Yeah, but I know in your writing, I've seen you mention also that Yukon Golds can potentially have a little bit more of a potato flavor. Yeah. Whereas Idaho's are a little more neutral. Totally. I also feel like the color on this is so pretty. Yeah, it like, is appealing. Like, it looks buttery to me. And then when you put it next to this, this looks like super toned down. Mm. But I also feel like the color isn't associated with the flavor. I just, I think it looks nicer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's taste. Okay, all right. <laughs> really good. I want a piece of fried chicken to dunk uh -huh. in it. I think yeah. that's yummy. When it has this velvety soft texture, mm -hmm. it feels to me like a vehicle for butter and cream, like a comfort, yeah. like a true comfort food basically. Totally. Yeah. I love it. That's good. Mm. 
And that's so good too. And I really like the pieces of the skin. Mm -hmm. I feel like some people would think maybe it's like a little too much, but it like reminds me I'm eating a potato. You yeah. Know? Like not just like a puree vegetable. These feel so different to me. Yeah. They're mm. almost like two different foods, I want to say. Like, yeah, yeah. Obviously, they're both mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. This, the Yukon Gold, was rich in flavor in a way that the Idaho's wasn't. Totally, yeah. Coming into this, I felt sort of predisposed to liking this one mm -hmm. just because of the legacy of like Joel Rubichon and these like perfectly creamy mashed, like, sure. like chef's mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this kind of rustic version was so easy to make yeah. with the masher yeah, yeah. and leaving the skin on. It's nice. I'm gonna say that the flavor is better on yeah. the Yukon Gold. So this is my favorite yeah. too. Yeah. And then if you're a texture person, mm -hmm. go for the items. Yeah. This would be really nice like swirled under something. Right. You know? Like yeah. this sort of has to be a part of something else. Totally. This I could Gravy. eat like a bowl full of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I could eat yeah. just this. Yeah. I really huh. like it. I'm surprised. I wasn't expecting to have this reaction, so. I wasn't expecting to like them at all, so. <laughs> So we added cream and butter. Mm -hmm. Would you ever that add helps. other other sort of creamy, fatty elements? Mm. Greek yogurt or oh. olive oil? Yeah, that'd be nice. I could go for something like tangy. I like I'm always have Greek yogurt in my fridge. So yeah. I feel like that would be good. For the folks at yeah. home, don't feel limited to just what we showed here. You can really get creative in terms of whatever yeah. fat you're adding. Olive oil, I think, would be great with Yukon that'd be Gold. Super good, and yeah. maybe like creme fraiche, Greek yogurt, sour cream, something tangy in yeah. the Idaho's. Now you're developing your own mashed potato recipe for Big I, Little Recipes. I am. They are salt and vinegar mashed potatoes. Okay. Um, so they're really close to classic, but just a tiny bit of vinegar makes a super big difference. You're using malt vinegar in with those? Yeah, yeah. Kind of just like a potato chip and like you really don't need a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's That's nice. That's another element just, to think about because these are, mm -hmm. it's all about sort of the savory elements, yeah. a touch of acid to brighten up the whole thing. Totally, yeah, it kind of cuts all the creaminess. All right, so look out for Emma's recipe coming yeah. soon and get creative with your mashed potatoes. The Idaho potatoes, because they're more neutral and because they're fluffy, they're sort of a vehicle for taking on more bold flavors. You can turn them into whatever you want them to be. To illustrate that, we're gonna show three quick ways to add more flavor to your Idaho potatoes. We're gonna do one with brown butter, one with milk that's been infused with garlic and some fresh herbs, and a final version with cheese. It's a classic French preparation called Palms Aligo. So the first batch I'm gonna do is the brown butter. The brown butter pairs really nicely with hearty meats and sausages, things of that type. I do keep a whisk handy when I'm making brown butter. Once the butter is fully melted and it starts to foam and sizzle, I'm whisking constantly. It helps you brown the butter evenly when you're whisking consistently. As your brown butter gets dark, to make sure it doesn't carry over and continue cooking, transfer it to a bowl, stay safe, don't burn your brown butter. It's a very delicate thing. It goes from not toasted at all to almost burnt in maybe 10, 15 seconds. Mm. The brown butter gives it a really distinct flavor, a toasty, nutty sensation. It's really nice. The next variation on mashed potatoes we're gonna do, it's gonna feel a little bit lighter because we're working with milk rather than butter and heavy cream. And we're going to infuse that milk with garlic, fresh thyme, bay leaf, and black peppercorns. Just simmering the milk with those ingredients for 10 to 15 minutes and then straining it is gonna add a world of flavor into the mashed potatoes. Something subtle but also distinct. I'm just gonna crush, I'm gonna crush each garlic clove to release the flavor. You can leave the skin on, it doesn't matter because we're straining the whole thing in the end anyway. Bay leaves, I like to sort of crunch them in half before I drop them in. Again, it just releases more flavor. Peppercorns, just maybe a teaspoon. Bring this up to a gentle simmer. 
let it go for 10, 15 minutes. You wanna be stirring pretty regularly so that the bottom of the milk doesn't scorch. Our milk mixture has been infusing now. Those flavors are gonna to mingle together in with these potatoes. It's gonna taste so good. This is such a simple technique and it yields such great flavor. Because we use milk for this particular recipe rather than the cream and butter that we've been using, it's not gonna taste quite as rich. It's gonna feel a little bit lighter. You don't need the richness of the butter and the heavy cream because it still has a richness of flavor, even though it's not quite as unctuous as the other mashed potatoes that we made. This has really nice texture. So, alley goat, we're gonna make in the pot on the stovetop. The other mashed potatoes, we've been mixing it in a bowl off the stovetop. Here we want the mashed potatoes to be really steaming hot in the pot. When we add our shredded cheese, we're gonna use a mix of Comte and Emmental cheese. Any sort of Swiss Alpine style cheese is good here. You want something with a sort of semi-soft texture that's gonna melt easily and a little bit pungent is good here. If you're curious about the specific proportions for this alley goat, there is a recipe on the Food52 website, you can check it out. You're looking for classic, smooth, hot mashed potatoes in the pot, steaming, and at that point you can add a little bit of cheese at a time, stirring until it almost has an elastic texture to it. It's one of the richest and most enjoyable dishes I think you can eat when it comes to potatoes. So first I'm gonna add a little bit of Comte cheese. Next, this is the Emmental cheese. I'm looking for textural cues. I want to see the potatoes ultimately stretch almost like it's a single piece of melting cheese. When it comes to alley goat, you wanna make it and serve it and eat it right away when the cheese is melting and hot. It's not the sort of thing that you can make in advance and chill and reheat again, it would get too messy. You can make plain mashed potatoes ahead of time and then reheat them on the stovetop and add the cheese at the last minute. When the mashed potatoes start to take on this sort of quality, really stringy, ropey, creamy, cheesy kind of texture, that's when you know you're all set. If your original mashed potatoes are fully savory and salty, and then you add cheese on top of it, it could get too salty. So under season your original mashed potatoes, and then add the cheese and taste from there, see if it needs salt or not. Yeah. Look at that. This is one of life's pleasures. Mm. It's so good. These are my babies. I can't choose a favorite one, I love them all. These are the Yukon Golds, skin on, rustically mashed with the potato masher. This was that first batch of mashed potatoes that we passed through the tammy. Very simple, just with butter and cream. Brown butter mashed potatoes, which I think might be my favorite, surprisingly, out of all these, they're so distinct. These were the ones where we infused the milk with garlic, herbs, black peppercorns, and then our palm sally goat, our cheesy mashed potatoes here at the end. You know, the potato is such a humble ingredient, but it can be a vehicle for such decadent and fun variations on mashed potatoes. I'm excited for you to get creative at home, experiment with different varieties of mashed potatoes. Uh, leave a comment, let me know which variety you prefer.